In a previous video, we discussed sensitivity and specificity. Uh, I left this example right here. Uh, in the previous example, we had 20 true positives, people that had the condition and tested positive. 180 false positives, tested positive, didn't actually have the disease. 10 false negatives, 1,820 true negatives, tested negative, didn't have the disease. Sensitivity of 68%, a little low. Specificity of 91%. Uh, so sensitivity and specificity are very helpful when you're analyzing a test, when you're trying to decide whether this is a good test or whether this is a, a poor test or a weak test. Sensitivity and specificity are not very helpful uh, to the patient sitting in the waiting room because uh, they require a person to know whether they have a condition or not. So when I go and get a flu test, I'm going to get a flu test because I don't know if I have the flu or not. I don't know if I'm condition positive or if I'm condition negative. So getting a negative test doesn't really help me know whether I'm getting a false negative or a true negative. Uh, so that's why we have these other two measurements, PPV and MPV. Uh, they help the patient sitting in the room. They're helpful for you to know if I get a positive test. Is this something I need to be alarmed about? Or do I need to take a deep breath and wait for uh, some other tests to be done? Or if I get a negative test, does that close the door on this? Or is this condition still a possibility? So we are going to start by talking about PPV positive predictive value. It looks at what's the probability of you having the condition given the test says you have the condition. So that's true positives over all positives, both true positives and false positives. And it would be a fraction, so I'm going to express it as such. And let's just go ahead and make this bigger. So for our example over here, we had 20 true positives. And we would sit that on top of our 20 true positives and our 180 false positives people that were told they have the condition, but in actuality did not have the condition. And that would come out to about, or exactly, 10%. 10% of the people that got a positive test had the condition. This would mean that 90% of the people that sat in the waiting room or the patient room and were told they had the condition we're actually fine. False positive. And that's helpful information to know when you're making decisions. MPV, negative predictive value, would look at true negatives over all negatives. True negatives plus false negatives. So I'm going to underline that. Taking a look at our example here, we had 1,820 true negatives out of the 1,280 and 1 uh, O R 10 false negatives, and I need to put in my little fraction bar. So 
So that would come out to be about 99.5%. Let me make this wider here. So that's a very, that's a, that's a good MPV. So if you're sitting in the patient room, uh, it comes back negative. Well, the test is accurate, telling people uh, that aren't sick. Or the test is accurate with its negative result 99.5% of the time. As in 99.5% of the time, if it comes back with a negative test, you're fine. Whereas 10% of the time, if it comes back positive, you actually have the condition. So I would say you could breathe a nice uh, sigh of relief when you get a negative test. And if it comes back positive, take a deep breath. Still more testing to be done. Still more investigation needed. So that would be PPV, positive predictive value, MPV, negative predictive value. Uh, and I'd like to review, so we would have looked, let's see if I can make this show a little different. We looked here for PPV. We looked at true positives over all positives. And then we looked here for MPV, negative predictive value. We looked at true negatives over all negatives.